What do I think your best value is um, when you're looking to buy a Telecaster or put one together for yourself? Um, I wanted to use mine as an example because I think this is one of the nicer Telecasters that I've ever played and uh, everybody who has ever played it um, or you know seen me play it or heard it or whatever has always commented on how much they like it and I get a lot of questions about uh, about this guitar so I figured I'd just do a little video and uh, sort of share with you some of my thoughts on um, picking one out or putting putting one together This one is an American Special Telecaster. Um, it's sort of low man on the totem pole as far as the American series go, but it is an, an American series guitar. Um, this one's from 2008, I think. Um, and it had modif uh, these modifications already done to it. When I was looking for a Telecaster, I, I specifically was looking for these mods, and this one just happened to come up and I got a really good deal on it. I actually only paid like $500 for this guitar, 500 Canadian, which um, is a steal of a deal. You may never find a bargain like that ever again, but um, if I were going to build another guitar, I I'd go for something very similar. So one of the big things, um, especially with American series guitars, is finding one that the neck and the body sound and feel right. That's a big portion of it. I think that's where the Mexican guitars actually um, are very, very hit or miss. Even these ones can be hit or miss. But um, it has to do with the resonant frequency between the body and the neck. And I know some people, you know, put a lot of stock in that, others don't. But um, I find a huge difference. Uh, like, you hear how there's a different pitch? I don't know if you could hear it or not, but if you could hear it, um, there's a slightly different pitch between the body and the neck, and uh, I don't know exactly what the interval is, um, but I know like guys like Steve Vine and stuff like that, they always talk about it being a fourth or a fifth. Um, the main thing that I find is when uh, the body and neck have a frequency that's in unison. Um, you know, when they're the same note, they, they usually don't tend to sound very good. Um, and once in a while, like if they have, you, you know, they'll have a really odd sort of dissonant resonance to each other. But usually I find um, it's most guitars that have um, the same frequency that's resonant in both the body and the neck. That's usually when you'll get into um, you know, it, the guitar doesn't sound good no matter how many pickup swaps or electronics or no matter what you do to it. The other very critical thing is on this guitar, um, the bridge plate. Now this is a Joe Barden bridge plate. Uh, Joe Barden saddles, I think they're brass. Um, why that's so critical? Most of the Fender bridge plates are far too light for these guitars. Even the ashtray style ones, um, some of them, they're made out of a very light material. This one isn't. This one's fairly heavy. And I think that that's a very important, because um, any of the guitars I've played that have this bridge plate on them, they tend to resonate better. It tra tends to transfer the vibration of the strings into the body of the guitar. And um, that's very important. Just having the strings through um, through the body uh, it isn't enough. It's not enough to transfer um, that momentum that they have, and it really when it really creates a feel difference. And um, you'll notice a fatness of tone with these, uh, even with the the like the stock um, stock pickups. You'll find that uh, it's a much fatter tone, and it doesn't have as much of that ice picky bitey sort of thing that's uh, that's not as desirable.
So, and brass saddles on their own, I don't really find um, do a whole lot with a stock bridge. There, um, there is really something about having this heavier weight plate, um, you know, spread out over that uh, that body. That really makes the difference. Just putting bra brass saddles on with your stock. Um, your stock bridge plate uh, it just doesn't really do a whole lot in my opinion. I've heard a lot of really bad guitars and played a lot of really uh, bad sounding guitars that um, you know they put brass saddles on and even with a good setup they just it never speaks the way that you want it to. Uh, as far as electronics and stuff like that, um, I'm not much of a purist in that regard. This one actually does have a vintage cap in it um, but you know I've played several guitars with you know orange drop caps in them or specialty caps and it doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of difference um, you know there might be a slight difference there so I'd say just you know pick and choose set it up with alligator clips and you know you can go through a bunch of different caps and find what works for you um, I know this one works for me I do have a bad volume pot I've got to replace that uh, you know it's all scratchy and I don't know maybe you'll hear it in the, in the demo recording Sort of the secret weapon on Telecasters that a lot of people never even talk about or think about um, is the tone control. Tone control is incredibly useful on these guitars. Um, you'll sort of hear it in the demo. Most of the time I actually roll um, the tone pot back a little bit. Now there is a little bit of a notch in this one that's you know maybe about a quarter of the way back. Um, oftentimes I'm right up to that notch. Sometimes I'll run it all the way out, sometimes I'll pull it back. There's been recording sessions where I pull the tone way back just because um, you know you set up a tone for yourself but then you get in the room and your amps locked away in another room and uh, you're sitting in with a band and your tone just isn't right. You know you need it fatter or brighter and uh, this guitar can really do that. <laughs> So don't be afraid to use that tone control. Test it out. Make sure um, that it performs the way that you want it to. And if not, you can always swap those components out. Uh, so I guess we'll... Uh, I should talk about the tuners. Um, on this one, I've got the, uh, the locking tuners. I'm not sure what they are. Um, these might be the Fender fender locking tuners. I sort of think that they are. Um, they're definitely not Spurzels because I've, I've had those on Gretsch's and stuff like that. I really like those but um, these are great. I'll, I know some guys um, don't like the locking tuners. They think it adds too much weight to the headstock but I like having that weight up there. Um, I think it's sort of nice. And that's the other thing with this guitar. Um, it's got some weight to it but it's not deathly heavy and when it's hanging on you um, it's not like it's completely out of balance um, and I think that's sort of important as well because I find a lot of the aftermarket necks and stuff like that for these guitars sometimes they can be really heavy and really weighty and um, I never find I find if the neck is too heavy on them uh, you really get into a situation where um, it's not a guitar that resonates as well and doesn't sound as good. It's got a different different type of thing. It's almost like it's a little bit too um, throaty or upper upper level chesty or something like that. Whereas when you have a body that's um, a lot heavier, or denser, um, it sort of becomes like a dead plank almost. It's a different type of thing. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying that um, for your purposes that that couldn't work out, but uh, I sort of tend to steer away from that type of thing. I want something that's going to have a certain amount of openness to it while having that fatness and body to it. Um, and how you get that sort of open sound that's not too shrill is uh, by making sure that that lower mid-range is sort of in the right place. And that's why, you know, I've talked about, you know, the bridge plate and the resonant frequency between the body and the neck being so important. Um, so the last thing that I'll touch on is uh, pickups. These are Lindy Freeland Blues Specials. Uh, they're 10% overwound. Um, there's tons, tons of great pickups out there. Uh, a lot of the Seymour Duncan ones actually sound really good. I've played several guitars with Seymour Duncans in them that were pretty amazing. Um, some of the stock Fender pickups can be okay. I don't necessarily prefer the stock ones that came in, in, in this guitar, but uh, you know, they're okay. They're not bad. Um, 
Yeah, so Lindy Freelands, I can highly recommend those. I, I love those pickups. I've played them in a bunch of different guitars, and they always seem to sound good um, when you get them set up properly. Uh, but, you know, you can use your own judgment as to uh, what you're going to swap in there. And uh, there's a number of good options. I wouldn't go super cheap. Usually, you sort of hit a sweet spot price range-wise. Um, where, you know, they're not the most exotic pickups, but they're not the bottom of the barrel. And usually in that mid-range somewhere, um, you know, in that $100 to $200 range, you're going to find a lot of really good pickup options. Um, yeah. I guess the last thing to touch on is, um, you know, why would you choose something like this over um, one of the higher level American series guitars or a custom shop guitar? Um, I guess it all depends on how much money you have and what you want out of it. If you want a guitar that you can take out on the road and play um, and not worry too much about getting dinged up and it's still going to perform well, it's going to feel good and it's going to sound good consistently, um, I think this is your best option because let's say that you know you can find these guitars secondhand for 500 bucks all day um, some of them will be more than that but with some negotiation you can get them for around 500 sometimes under if you're lucky and many of them may have some of these mods already done um, but if not let's say you spend 500 dollars for the guitar um, it's going to be another 500 maybe let's say 700 at the outside to do all these mods to it um, you know you're 1200 dollars in and uh, you know, you're not going to get much in an American series. You're just going to get a standard American series for, for $1,200, and it's not going to be as good. You're not going to have the right bridge plate on it. Um, you know, you're still going to have to search through to find the good, right, you know, neck and body combination. Um, the pickups, you know, the stock pickups are okay, but they're nothing special. So I think, you know, it's the best bang for your buck is really to buy something like the American Special Series and upgrade it if you can find the right guitar that sounds good. That's the main thing, even though it's not going to have these mod, it may not have these mods done to it when you go to look at it, play it, concentrate on the feel, you know, how does it feel and does it have sort of that core thing that you want in the guitar, the core things that I've talked about, um, you know, I, I just think it's a, it's a much better direction to go rather than sinking a whole bunch of money or, you know, like buying a six or eight thousand dollar custom shop uh, guitar, those, some of those guitars are absolutely beautiful, they're very nice, but, you know, if you don't have money to burn, um, that's probably a guitar that you're going to keep in your studio and you're not going to tour around with or, um, you know, take it out to jams or anything because, uh, you don't want something like that getting dinged up. There's a lot of investment in that. Um, and with that being said too, uh, you know, a lot of the American series guitars that aren't like the American special series, people want just way too much money for them secondhand. And, uh, you know, even to do a couple mods, you know, you're still up around $2,000 buying a used guitar sometimes. So um, just something to consider when you're looking at uh, looking at one of these. Okay, so just to wrap this thing up, um, I hope you found this info helpful. I, I'm sort of doing this unscripted, so if uh, you have any comments or questions, just post them down below. Um, don't forget to subscribe. That would really help me out. I'm trying to um, grow this a little bit and to share some information with people about uh, some of my hobbies and passions. And... Um, yeah, if you found this helpful at all, you know, share it with your friends. Share it uh, with anybody you think could benefit from it. And, uh, you know, give me a subscribe and a like. And, uh, yeah, you can also tell me what you didn't like about it. Um, I'm always open to, uh, to criticisms and things like that. So, um, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. And I hope your guitar shopping goes well.